Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your daily update for June 22nd, 2020. Uh, many of you have asked me in emails and, and in other forums, uh, when's this great currency reset coming? When are we gonna break from the current collapsing system and go to something that represents the traditions of the American system? And I can tell you that the way you pose the question represents a part of the problem. You're waiting for someone else to solve the problem. The people with the power, the establishment, have run this system into the ground. We're in the midst of a great systemic collapse affecting every aspect of life on the planet. If you wish to do something about it, you can. On June 27th, the Schiller Institute is sponsoring a conference, an online conference titled, Will Humanity Prosper or Perish? The Future Demands of Four Power Summit Now. What we will present at that is the solutions devised by Lyndon LaRouche over many decades for a four power agreement to restore the economic policies from the American system that was introduced by our founding fathers and has been the basis of the periods of economic prosperity in the United States. This is not going to happen by itself. There aren't a bunch of good guys in the, in the corners of Washington who are waiting for the moment to implement this. It's got to be demanded by the American people in a mobilization. And President Trump has indicated that he would support many aspects of LaRouche's policies through his own campaigning. So it's time for us, as an American people uh, and supporters of the American system around the world, to join in restoring this idea, the principles of the American economic system represented by LaRouche's four laws, implemented by the four great powers that can do it. So June 27th, an all day online conference, uh, you can go register for it on the schillerinstitute.com. Now this is especially needed because as we talked about last Friday, there's a resurgence of geopolitical confrontation that is being shaped by the Anglo-American establishment. Uh, the latest example of this is the continuing sabotage of the arms control discussions uh, by Esper, uh, by O'Brien from the uh, National Security Agency. And what they're saying is that they're demanding that China should join Russia and the US in talks. Well, the existing agreements were forged between the US and Russia the two largest powers, nuclear powers and military powers in the world. The Chinese still exist at a far lower level, and there's plenty of time to work out bilateral and multilateral relations with China. But what's essential is to restore the principles that came out of the Ronald Reagan administration and then were reintroduced at the end of the Cold War for cooperative, collaborative relationships between the United States and Russia to reduce the danger of nuclear war. Now, the sabotage of this is part of the geopolitics. Pit nations against each other, especially the great powers. If you're a, a place like the United Kingdom, which has lost its military strength, is, is uh, turned into an industrial rust heap, but nevertheless possesses a financial capability from the city of London, and a strategic capability in its ability to manipulate other nations through its intelligence services, as it did with the whole Russia Gate. that this is how geopolitics works, to pit these nations against each other. Now, the latest example of this comes from Esper, the Secretary of Defense, in his release of the Defense Space Strategy document. This is great power competition in space. It's written in the language of geopolitics, and as you'll hear from quotes from Esper, he's speaking as though we're in the end of the 19th century, where the world is divided by imperial camps, each combating the other for a little bit more space on the planet. Only this time it's in space. What Esper writes, or what he said, is that China and Russia represent the most immediate and serious threats to U.S. space operations. He goes on to say that their intentions and capabilities present urgent and enduring threats to the ability of the department to achieve its desired conditions in space. 
Now, what are those desired conditions? Militarization of space? Esper said, our adversaries have made space a warfighting domain. And to counter this, he proposed that we build a comprehensive military advantage in space and that we shape the strategic environment. Now, this is, as I said, the language of geopolitics. What's the reality in space? The U.S. and Russia have been cooperating as the U.S. 10 years ago shut down its rocket launching programs and we've had to rely on Russia to send our astronauts to the International Space Station where there's a collaboration going on. The Chinese are already on the moon with a lunar station, a space station, which is on the far side of the moon, and they have plans to uh, put a manned, uh, a manned capsule landing on the moon in the near future. Neither of these countries, Russia or China, have defined their operations as anti-American or as designed to establish a war fighting capability in space. This is where President Trump, with his campaign promise to seek cooperation and collaboration with Russia, should step in and say to Esper and others, we're not going to have an arms race in space. In fact, the president has been explicit in opposing an arms race on Earth. This is what the whole flap over Helsinki was about, his summit with uh, Russian President Putin, where the media kept... Uh, focusing on Trump saying that he trusted Putin more than he did his intelligence community when it came to strategic evaluations. And you know what? The latest evidence that came out from the House Intelligence Committee showing that none of the intelligence operatives who said there was Russian interference and Russian meddling in the 2016 elections could present any evidence of that. Robert Mueller had no evidence of that. So the intelligence community which went after Trump with Russiagate, has proven to be completely wrong. Clapper, the director of national intelligence under Obama, Brennan, the CIA director, Comey at the FBI, all wrong, 100% wrong. All their supporters among the Democratic Party were wrong. Trump was right. He could trust Putin more than he could trust them. So he tried to forge a cooperative relationship, which resulted in crushing ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Syria. And that's trying to be, that's being overturned right now by Pompeo and, and Esper and the US Congress imposing sanctions against the government of Syria and the leaders of that government as a way of starving the people and uh, bringing about regime change by famine. So we see geopolitics across the board from, from these networks in opposition to what President Trump says that he wants. So the Russian Foreign Ministry responded to this Esper rant by saying, we see a possibility to remove mutual concerns within a comprehensive, meaningful U.S.-Russian dialogue. This would follow in the footsteps of what Ronald Reagan was trying to do with the Strategic Defense Initiative. Remember, Reagan brought in Lyndon LaRouche to negotiate with the Soviet military about sharing the technology of anti-missile defense systems. This is what Reagan wanted to do. And LaRouche was willing to extend that, actually developed a plan to extend it called the Strategic Defense of Earth, which would take the cooperation on the Strategic Defense Initiative to end the threat of nuclear destruction on our planet and extend it into space for collaborative efforts to deal with such problems as asteroids and comets that might hit our planet, as well as to discover other kinds of things that we need to know about dangers in, in near and far space. So this was the direction that Reagan wanted. This is what Donald Trump said he wanted to do when he came in. And it's being turned in by the, turned into a competition and a possibly arms race in space by the same geopolitical networks that, are, that ran Russiagate and are pushing for a war with China. So that's why we need a four-power agreement. That's the importance of the Schiller Institute Conference. Now let me just add a footnote here because something happened Saturday, which many of you know, uh, but was covered by the media in a completely fake way. Donald Trump held a campaign rally. He went back out into the uh, tradition of Trump with these mass rallies. And what did the media focus on? 
the auditorium was not filled, that the 19,000 seats were one third or, or so empty. And they ignored the possibility that people did not go because of fear that there would be violence there. Instead, they said, this is a defeat for Trump. Well, two points here. One, do you think Joe Biden could have a large rally? Biden could have a rally in a telephone booth if you could get him out of his basement. So this is where you see the absolute fraud of the media. But there's another part. Very little reporting on what President Trump actually said. And one of the main points he made over and over and over is that the Democrats are the party of the green crazies, the anti-growth energy policy that would destroy the United States as a productive economy. So again, we see how the geopoliticians and their allies in the media are trying to shape the fight to convince you that Trump has to go, that Trump was a mistake, and that instead you have to trust the networks in the State Department and the intelligence community who warned you that Trump was an agent of Putin. And we know now that was a complete lie. We knew it back at the beginning, but now it's proven to be a lie. So don't be a chump for these geopoliticians and these neoliberals. And that's why I would encourage you, go to the theschillerinstitute.com, register for the conference next Saturday, June 27th, and join with us to defeat this era of geopolitics, to put it away, to end it, and to move into a new era of great power cooperation, not just on arms control and things of that sort, but on uh, infrastructure development, the, the rebuilding of the world's manufacturing capability, a world health project so that we are never again caught off guard by a pandemic, and then cooperation in space exploration and development. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you again tomorrow.